Today, I'm going to be remaking a set of keels that I recently broke. I was surfing some shore break, and sure enough, my board got slammed into the sand and I broke my keels. But I'm actually going to make these ones a little bit different than the set I broke. I have some casting resin to try, as well as a bunch of branches from a tree that fell down. So I'm thinking I'm going to try to combine the two, and I'm going to make a big fin blank using the resin and branches that I hopefully can slice out a bunch of really cool looking fin panels. To limit how much resin I need, I'm going to make a mold roughly in the shape of my fin, so I'll start by tracing my fin template on the bottom of the mold. I'll also mark out where the sides of the mold will be, giving each side a little space around the fin template. I'll then use the bandsaw to trim off the excess. Once I have that trimmed, I'll take it over to the disc sander and square up the edges. With the base of the mold cut out, I'll mark out the sides for the mold. Once I have all the parts of the mold cut, I'm going to use some tuck tape to seal the inside of the mold. This will prevent the epoxy from sticking to the MDF. With all the mold parts covered in tuck tape, I'll pre-drill where the screws are going to go. This will prevent the MDF from splitting when I screw the mold together. After I have the mold together, I'll go over all the seams using some silicone. The silicone will help ensure the mold doesn't leak. I 
have the mold all put together and while I'm waiting for this silicone to dry, I'm gonna prep my branches for casting. To prep my branches, I'm gonna measure and cut them all to length. I started cutting them with the handsaw, but this was taking too long, so I switched to the chop saw. Getting the bark off was a long process, and the fastest way I found to do it was to use a knife and slowly peel all the branches. Once I had all the bark removed, I decided I was going to seal the ends. This is because I'm going to use a pigmented resin, and I don't want the pigment from the resin to seep into the end grain. To seal the ends, I'm just going to use a little bit of polycrylic and use a sponge brush to apply it. Once dried, I'll fit all the pieces into the mold, trying to fit as much as possible so I don't use too much resin. The resin I'm using for this is a casting resin, and this will allow me to pour a deeper mold, and I should be able to pour this all in one go. Once I have the resin mixed, I'm going to add in my black pigment and mix it again. With my resin mixed, I'm going to slowly pour it into the mold. By pouring it slow, it's going to allow the resin to seep in and around the cracks, and this will help prevent bubbles in the final cast. Once the resin was poured, I placed the mold in a container to catch any leaks. After the resin is cured for roughly a week, I'll take the mold apart, being careful not to damage it so I can reuse it in the future. Before I slice out my fin panels, I'm going to trace my fin template on top of the block. 
I'll then take my block over to the bandsaw and trim off any excess material around the fin template. To slice out my fin panels, I'm going to use my resaw jig that I made in a previous video. This jig works really well for slicing out fin panels because I can precisely move the block in a little at a time. Now that I have all my fin panels milled out, I'm going to stick them on my rotor jig and I'll be able to flatten one side and then flip them over and flatten the other. And this will allow me to get two panels the same thickness and they'll be nice and parallel so that'll be easy to foil them and get them close to a match. So I'm gonna do that to these fin panels and then they'll be ready to make some fins. To stick my panels to the router sled, I'm going to use a little bit of double-sided tape. On the first pass on each panel, I'm going to set my router depth just to take a little bit off each panel so that the top of the panel is perfectly flat. Once I've done one pass on all the panels, I'm going to flip them over and put the flat sides down and I'm going to match two panels up together and then repeat the process and this will ensure that I have two panels that are the same thickness and perfectly flat on both sides. With all my panels flattened out, I'm going to trace out my fin template onto each panel. I'll then take my panels over to the bandsaw and roughly cut them out, making sure that I keep each pair together. One way I've been speeding up getting my fin panels to the final shape is using the router with a spiral trim bit. So I'm going to attach my fin panels to my MDF template with some double-sided tape, and then I'll take these over to the router table to finish cutting them out. One issue I had was the resin didn't bond great to the wood, so the panels kept falling apart. This isn't a big issue, it just slows down the process a lot. Luckily, it's an easy fix. To fix this, I used a little bit of super glue and glued the panels back together. Once the glue cured, it was back to the router table. For these fins, I want to add the cant before I glass them, so I'm going to use this new router jig I've been working on to set the cant. The nice thing about this jig is I can use the digital angle finder to precisely set the angle of the cant. For these keels I'm going to go with more cant than I typically do, and on these ones I'm going to try out 6 degrees. Once I have the angle set, I'm going to use the router to cut the cant into the fin. And this is going to cut the cant into the inside of the fin, so I have to make sure that I flip my other fin panel the other way so that the cant is cut on the correct side.
Before I gloss the insides of the fins, I'm going to sand them smooth to remove as much of the rotor marks as I can. Before I foil my fins, I'm going to glass the insides. And this will just give the panel a little more strength so that it doesn't fall apart when I foil it. For these fins, I don't want to glass them too heavy, I want them to have a little bit of flex. So I'm going to go with two layers of 6 ounce on each side, however on the inside I'm going to add another little 6 ounce patch that extends from the bottom of the fin up just past the tab of the fin. And this will give this area some more strength as this is where I find fins typically break. After the epoxy cured, I cut out my fins, and now I'm going to dry out the foil onto each fin panel. I find sketching out the foils onto the fin panels really helps keep a pair of fins similar, and it makes sure that your foil is very consistent between the two fins. It's not necessary, but the couple extra minutes really helps keep them the same. foil out my fins, I'm going to use a little 5 inch disc sander and some 40 grit sandpaper. And this makes it really quick to foil out fins. When I'm foiling my fin, I'm going to use the foil marks that I made and I'm going to use them similar to how you would use rail bands on a surfboard when you're shaping the rails. And this makes it really easy to get a consistent foil. Once the fins are foiled, I'll then hand sand them again to help remove any sander marks. After I finish sanding the fins and clean them off, they are now ready to be glassed and have the rice paper logo added. For this side of the fins, I'm going to do two more layers of 6 ounce, but before I add those, I'm going to place my rice paper logo underneath.
After these layers gelled, I gave the fins a quick hot coat and then waited for this to cure. Once this cured, the fins are now ready to have fin tabs casted. Once the fin tabs cured, I gave the fins a final sanding and polishing. I did have a bit of an issue with bubbles on the inside of the fin when I did my first layer of glass. The end grain soaked up a lot of resin and caused some small bubbles. This isn't a big deal, it's not going to really uh, hinder the performance of the fins, it's just more of an aesthetic thing. If it was really bad, I would just sand it off and glass them again. Uh, but for these, I think I'm just going to leave it as is and surf them. And next time, I will just seal the end grain before I glass them. Or I'll add a little bit of extra resin to the fiberglass. With that being said, here's the final shots of the fins. Mm -hmm. 